Now, I want to talk to you about binoculars. Very handy for a whole range of activities, from rambling and bird watching to horse racing and astronomy. These Steiner Commander XPs are the sort of binoculars you might choose if your life depended on them. They have the military stamp of approval. They're used by the US Navy SEALs, no less. They're waterproof to two meters, shockproof, with autofocus, a built-in compass, and brilliantly clear and bright optical performance. Steiner claim they're the brightest pair of binoculars ever made, with no less than 96% of the light out there making it through to your eyes. It doesn't make for something pocket-sized, but even at night, the image is fantastic. It's amazingly clear. Ugh. Now, one major disadvantage with the Steiners is that they cost a not inconsiderable 600 quid. But there are plenty of cheaper binoculars out there that are lighter and also have equally enticing gadgety specifications. And I went to test three of them by spending the day with a man who really has used his binos in life and death situations. Chris Ryan is probably Britain's toughest bloke. He spent 10 years in the SAS and was awarded the Military Medal for his part in Operation Bravo 2-0 during the First Gulf War. Sent behind enemy lines, he had to escape, walking over 200 miles to freedom. As we met in the wilds of Slough, I wasn't about to admit I was feeling a bit chilly. Hello, Chris. Hi, John. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Very good of you to lend us your expertise. And I mean, would you have used binoculars in the, in the military? Oh, absolutely. Um, we would always carry a good set of uh, binos. One of the roles the regiment used to have was calling in uh, fire onto an enemy position or sit in maybe in a tree line and observe a target uh, some distance away. Now, it was very important to have a good set of binoculars because the further away from the target you were, the safer, obviously, you would be. Chris reckons the Steiner's excellent clarity makes them ideal for military use but their hefty price and weight means that for general use, they're a bit overkill. Our first pair for testing are these Canons, the world's first binoculars with optical image stabilization. It shifts the prisms inside to compensate for shaky hands. Would it work? To find out, Chris would try to keep me in his sights while enduring a bumpy ride. Off you go. Cheers. To begin with, he left the image stabilization off. Predictably, it was a little shaky. Yeah, using these binoculars without the um, stabilising platform, I'm all over the place and can't really get a, a steady image. Next, Chris tried them with the image stabilisation on. Now putting the uh, stabilising program on, that definitely so softens the image now, and I would say they definitely work. Even at great distances, Canon stabilisers really help you view that far-off object clearly, whatever it is. The second pair in our test are these Bresser Super Wide Angle binoculars. As the name suggests, they give a greater field of view than normal ones. In fact, at a distance of 100 metres, they let you see nearly twice as much. I don't think uh, these are as good as the, the previous binoculars. Um, in, terms this, of, in terms of the optics? Or yes. In terms of the... Well, both really. This wide angle lens, I think it distorts to the extreme left and extreme right. I don't think this would be a problem maybe over a distance of five, ten mile if you were looking at a mountain range. Um, that these would probably be perfect for them or at a soccer match where, you know, that extra field of view would help. Could maybe. that be an advantage though in your line of work, you know, seeing, seeing, the, seeing the enemy approaching from the left or something or whatever? Absolutely not with a set of these. You would definitely know that you were surrounded, which wouldn't be a good thing. Giving a wide-angle view appeared to compromise the magnification of the Bressers, so Chris and I decided to set up a binocular vision test. I ran to the other end of the field, and then Chris tried to read as far down the optician's chart printed on my T-shirt as he could, using both the wide-angle Bressers and the image-stabilising cannons. The first set of glasses I'm going to use are the Canon. Uh, these are ten times magnification with the stabilisers. Um, using these now, I would have no problem reading the lines, PEC, EFD. What about the bottom line? That would be E, D, F, C, Z, Y. That's quite outstanding. 
At a distance of 75 meters, the cannon can read print that's just one and a half centimeters tall. Okay, these are the, the seven times magnification with the wide angle lens. They're quite hard from the top E, F, P, T, D, Z, and I'd be guessing at the other two. The 10 times magnification, I can home in and, uh, and read everything with that, um, with these shooting in the wind. So far, the image stabilizing cannons seem to be the best, but there's one more pair to go, and these are the most gadgety of them all. Right, now the third pair we're looking at is these. They're called Bushnell Instant Replays. Take a look through there. The Bushnells take 3.2 megapixel stills. With expandable flash memory, you can snap away to your heart's content. They can also record a 30 second continuous video loop, so you can replay anything remarkable right after you've seen it. Well, I'll tell you what, John, if, so you, get, if you get back up there with ah, your t shirt right. on and uh, let me have a look at you. The eye placement isn't that great. Magnification, I can read the first four lines. If we flip the lid for the gimmick to get the camera going and uh, start the camera, and then locate them on the screen, because again, it's not a true representation of the screen to what you see through the lens. The quality isn't that good. So I think it actually compromises the binoculars and, and you've got a gadget here that basically, um, if it goes wrong, it could probably affect the um, binoculars themselves. These are my least favorite out of all the binoculars. Again, the size of them, just the sheer quality sounds mm. cheap. Yeah. Um, the fact that they've got this gadget on top, you know, it's just a gimmick with a camera. Personally, I'll <laughs> buy, buy a camera, buy a set of binoculars. Ah, yes, absolutely. And in military terms. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, John, Chris was pretty categoric about these. They seem quite awkward to use. They're very use. awkward to use, very difficult to look through, and uh, generally not very good at one of those bits of technological convergence that doesn't work yet. So neither one thing nor the other at the moment. Mm. Um, mm. How many Gs for this one, then? One G. I wouldn't want to pair myself. OK, one G. Now, what about the wide angle, the Bresser? Well, these are actually quite useful in certain circumstances. You want to look at the countryside, get a good feel for the landscape, and they are very good value. So for me, that's a 3G. And finally, the cannon that seemed like quite a good all-rounder. Four Gs for the cannon. I mean, they're optically superb. I've learned since doing the piece that Chris Ryan actually now has a pair of cannons of his own. So um, that's a recommendation indeed, I think. So if you seriously want some good binoculars, these are the mm, ones to go absolutely. for. Absolutely.